when it comes to, I suppose, our image of ourselves, where does that image come from? What type of input do we have to decide what sort of person we are? And I'm not just talking about physical appearance, but the sort of person that we are, the sort of values that we have, the sort of how worthwhile we are as an individual, who speaks into that space and what are the mirrors that we use in order to uh, to measure a reflection of our value? For a lot of us, that uh, that comes through social media, of course. That is where we get our opinion of ourselves and our value through the lens of social media and other people's opinions of us. And, uh, well, the um, I suppose the downward spiral of comparing ourselves to others on social media who seem to have their act together a lot more than we do and are a lot more younger, better-looking, successful, and all those sorts of things. Uh, John Peachy from the uh, Think Fund being doing some very interesting thinking on this particular topic, asking the question, so if our identity comes from social media, where's God in all of this? Uh, JP, uh, kia ora. Good morning. Thanks for your time today. Hey, man. So good to be here. Yeah, what a great subject, really, because I, I, I've been stunned, actually, by the, the boldness of people to put stuff on social media. Yeah. And I'm talking only in the Christian world now mm-hmm. that are that are critiquing and criticizing other people. Yeah. Um, there's there's this kind of huge movement now of people criticizing, well, you know, some of the big names. And you know, and I and really whether Joel Osteen is hearing from God or not, I, it's none of my business. Yeah. It's between him and the Father, right? But but you've got you've got to be ballsy if you pardon the expression. Um, you've got to have have sort of some sort of social media courage to go online and start telling people that these ministries are not valid. Um, you might think that personally or, or in your own church circles, but I'm stunned by the way that people go on and criticize people online, really. And I just heard someone the other day criticizing the way people were preaching. Yeah. That, you know, if they're not preaching Jesus, you know, in, 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 in its entirety and totality, then they're just not, you know, just not part of the, of the crew, you know. And I'm yeah. like, wow. Wow. You know, Jesus was all through the Old Testament, guys. You can't forget that. I think uh, I think a lot of people have um, have got a self proclaimed ministry as a fruit inspector, John. I think that's that's uh, that's ah, the problem. Is uh, that they they uh, take time uh, pointing out the faults in other people. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that Jesus did talk about that in a parable about a a speck in your own eye and a, a well in, in the in your brother's eye and a plank of wood in your own that's uh, right i'm Joel i'm very logs in your eye. i'm very sure that joel austin has speckly eyes i mean he's a human being after all but yeah. uh, but watch out for the plank of wood perhaps in our own eyes in that regard and and jesus did talk about it in fact he put a name on it he called it judgmentalism and he wasn't that fond of the idea there's some jesus to preach right yeah, there's some Jesus to preach. Absolutely. And and I think we've got to be really careful, actually, uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ, about how we use the power of our words. You know, Scripture says really clearly, the power of life and death yeah. comes from the tongue, right? Comes out of your mouth, which, and really that comes from what's in your heart, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and yeah. the question is, the question for me is, is, you know, what's in your heart if 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 all you're doing is criticizing people? And, and I have to be really careful, too. Because I, you know, I work with organisations, and I can get a little judgmental about what they're doing, and and uh, but it's the old walk a mile in someone's shoes thing, I exactly. think as well. And and to be but fair, when criticism, cr- to be fair, sorry, that, that is part of your role. That is part of your ministry. You're invited into organisations to give a critique and say, "Hey, guys, in terms of management style, this is perhaps what I see and how you could be." Uh, yeah, yeah. How dumb are they, right? But, <laughs> but I think there's a key difference there, John. And 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 don't beat yourself up over this because I think there's a key difference between somebody saying, "Hey, you know what? I'd really appreciate some honest feedback as to what we could improve," and just yeah. unsolicited bile uh, attacking well, people that, online yeah. that we're never likely to meet. The thing that I that I know is, is that no one needs to be told what they're doing wrong, yeah. right? Because we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we know when we're doing stuff wrong, right? It's like your kids. When you say to your kids, you know, you've done something wrong, it's like it's not news to them, right? They know they're doing something wrong. <laughs> it may be so, news so that they've the been caught is, out, how but do you, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you present that so growth, and this is the God factor, right, is that yeah. God's correction is not a bruising experience. You don't start yelling for, for the Arnica cream after you've had an encounter with God. Yeah. You're looking at the, at the growth that he's showing you. And even this whole idea of, 
you know, I'm going to cut off every every branch that doesn't produce good fruit. Mm -hmm. Well, th it turns out there is actually some scriptural error in some of our interpretation of that. Because when you look at that scripture in John 15 that talks about the vine and the branches, and he's going to he's going to chop off the stuff which is not working, the the cut off word actually in the original language means to lift up, not cut off. Wow. Um, and that'll make people go run screaming for their for their uh, hopefully for their their <laughs> theological reference books because yep. it means to, it means to, and it makes sense right it says if this, if this branch is not producing good fruit I'm not going to cut it off I'm going to lift it up and it, and it comes back to the idea that the vines sitting on the ground would get mold yeah and they would not produce good fruit so by lifting them up there was air underneath them there was is airflow they could breathe mm -hmm. and produce the fruit so uh, I mean again yeah theologians can have can have me on about that that's fine but but God's correction is is based on for me is based on the whole rules of the prophetic which is to encourage yeah to edify and to comfort mm -hmm. so so when when you hear criticism really quite often what you're hearing is accusation mm. And if you know it's accusation, you know that it doesn't come from the Father, right? Yeah. It comes from somewhere else. Yeah. So I, I think we've got to be really careful. But but the other side of it, which is so wonderful, is the ability to encourage and lift people up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, by the same scripture that says, again, you, you know, life and death yeah. uh, comes from the tongue. And it says, choose life speak that you life. might live. Yeah. You know, yeah. speak life. And, um, uh, you, you know, I, I heard a testimony a number of years ago about a man who his son got sick really, really quickly and he took him to the emergency room and they rushed him off and the dad was left in the waiting room uh, and the child was was dying um, and in a really bad state. And for those who believe in angels, I mean, this is an angel story. So he said, mm. this is the guy who said to me, he said he was sitting in the waiting room and this guy came into the waiting room dressed like a courier driver. He was dressed in like this khaki kind of uniform, looked like a UPS driver. Yeah. And he, he went up to the man and he said to him three times, your son's name is life. And the guy sort of looked at him and said, what? He said, your son's name is life. Yeah. And he said to him three times, and then he just left. And the guy's like, what What on earth has gone on? Next minute, the doctor comes out and says, you won't believe this. Something miraculous has happened. And, and his child basically came back to life. Wow. I mean, just that you're healed. And you think, okay, angels at work here. But, but we have been given, and I think we can't underestimate this, right? We have been given the power to speak life. Mm. You know, when we should use that at every opportunity we have. And, every opportunity. And speaking life, to put that in modern vernacular, that includes speaking positive words on Twitter, for example, or X, uh, or, or social <laughs> media, or the way in which we engage with people, or even, I don't know, this is bold, having uh, the courage to push back on some of the negative, salty comments that other people make on social media. Depends on how much time you've got on your hands, uh, John, John, because if you pick a fight yeah, it's, in, in it's some totally. platforms, uh, it's, yeah, there's, there's no end to it. But but actually, to, um, to take the, a place where there is so much poison and vitriol and to speak some life into there, particularly, as I was saying at the beginning, for people who have got perhaps such a negative view of themselves because social media is their only mirror to their soul yeah. rather than getting a god perspective on stuff yeah no i think i think that i think that's right you, you know uh, i mean i just love the whole power of encouragement in in balancing the negative and i think we've just got to do that and i think part of our faith actually demands i would i would use that word demands that we speak life into people, that we speak encouragement. You know, a lot of leadership principles have to do with the fact that it's about seeing greatness in others, mm. even though that might be hidden by behavior and by layers and by addictions and by poor behaviors. You know, our skill is to see the greatness in others and see people as not just as resources, but see them as what I describe as possibilities. Yeah. So if you can be encouraging and unleash the possibility in someone, that's really making you a fantastic leader. That's yeah. I think that's how Jesus wants us, is to see the... To, in fact, I'd say, say it like this. If we can see people the way that Jesus sees people, man, the, the earth will just completely change. It'll fall off its axis, right? It'll just be fantastic. And um, and maybe some of the people in our life that we see as grumpy or, or toxic or unproductive or whoever we want to, to phrase that just need lifting up. Just need but lifting they, up they and, and, and get some some oxygen around that to have some positive yep. words spoken about uh, spoken over their life. Perhaps that's perhaps your part of the transformation that they need. 
you, neither you and I know what has happened to someone that we meet in the street or in the cafe. We don't know what's happened in the last hour or the last last day, the last week, the last year. You know, so we have no no right in a sense to make judgments in the, in that regard. And and a good friend of mine who's a who's a Christian counselor and deals with leaders actually all o- all over the world, counseling. He says he says this. He says never ask why the addiction, just always ask why the pain. You know, why are people behaving the way they're behaving? And and I think if we can do that. And and ask God, what what can I say to this person today? See, I I think I often say this to people when we talk about the prophetic. I say, can you can you tell me something nice about your kids? I may have said this before on air, but can you mm. say something nice about your kids? Well, people go, well, yeah, of course I can. Yeah. I said, well, how much more will the father say nice things yeah. about you? You know, you just have to ask God, what do, what do you want to say to this person? How can I encourage that person today? Mm. Andrew, you're looking so sharp in that blue suit, mate. You look, <laughs> you, look, you look really sexy, mate. You look like a fantastic. Man about town. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to take pickup lines from you any day of the week, JP. But <laughs> but but honestly, those those words of encouragement, those speaking life uh, for people. That, that I, I suppose there are so many people in our communities, and you know, we're talking about this in the social media sense as well. Wouldn't the world be a different place if a social media was used as a space to speak life, to lift oh, yeah. people up? to to bring uh, truth and and light and and all sorts of positive things in that space wouldn't it be a, a different world if we went out of our way to encourage people on social media instead of it being the toxic place that it is uh jp thank you so much uh not just for your time today but for your very sincere compliments of my appearance uh, we'll have you back on the program anytime uh thank you so much for the work that you do of course the thinkfarm.org Uh, A wonderful place to speak some truth and light into um, your organization or your business or in a leadership space as well, the thinkfarm.org. JP, thank you so much for joining us once again. My pleasure. Take good care. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.